tell you why I think that is good, no great news. We are going to talk about the conversation with Minority Mindset, which happened yesterday. Shout out Jen for making that happen. Yes, folks, Jen is doing great work for us, getting us talking to amazing contributors. We all owe her a debt of gratitude. Jen, you're amazing. Thank you so much. Uh, we can talk about what State Street said, and of course, we will talk about something Dave Ramsey put out. So again, folks, let's talk about inflation first, and then I'll tell you why I believe it is great news. So CPI came out today, CPI Consumer Price Index. We get four readings. We get month-on-month -month headline, month-on-month -month core, year-on-year -year headline, year-on-year -year core. Lots of other people calculate super core and things of that nature, but we are going to stick with the basics. So again, uh, headline, we'll do year on year first. Headline, headline came in last time at 3.4. The time before that, remember, it was 3.2. Before that, 3.1. Headline continuing on an upward trajectory. It was expected to come in at 3.4. Again, last was 3.2, sorry. Last was 3.2, then 3.1. Expected 3.4. It came in at 3.5. So we have three months. We have a clear trend of inflation higher. Now let's talk about month-on-month -month headline. Month-on-month -month headline last uh, was... I'm sorry, core, let's talk about, wow. Let's talk about core year on year. Last was 3.8. Expectations were 3.7. Came in at 3.8. Folks, even core has gone flat. When we saw CPI headline go up month on month for two months in a row, we were like, don't worry about it, core is falling. You can no longer say that. Core at 3.8 was flat month on month, right? It was 3.8 last month, 3.8 this month. Now let's talk about the all important month on month. Expectations for headline and for core were 0.3. Both came in at 0.4. So every reading was above expectations. Inflation is hot. Inflation is a problem. Now, let me tell you why I think it is great news. I think this reading is great news. Why? Because we can finally, we will finally have mortgage rates. Mortgage rates will stay above 7% for months to come. And if you watch my channel, you know that something I am hoping for is the housing market to heal itself. Unfortunately, in the market we are in now, rates below seven increase demand. And if you are increasing demand in a low supply environment, bad things can happen. And if rates were to fall too much, buyers would go on tilt and make very bad decisions. Now with this reading, Three months of validation, I am hopeful that we can put all of that behind us. Mortgage rates will be over 7%. Demand will be constrained and supply will build. We need supply to build. We are operating in a broken housing market. Now, let's be clear. There are some people that will be hurt buy this. If you happen to be a seller that has to sell and your property is not perfect, if your property is a luxury property, you are likely going to feel some pain. If you happen to have a clean property below the median, you are going to be just fine, and I am guessing. We are going to see inventory build. As an investor, inventory building allows us to find motivated sellers easier. The hardest time to be an investor was 2021 and 2022. 
where everything was flying off the shelf and we had record low supply. You make your money when you buy. The best way to get a good deal is to find a motivated seller. 7% rates will allow non-perfect properties to linger, stay on the market, and allow you and I to write disrespectful offers. I think it is a good thing. And then finally, there is a lot of commercial pain coming. Office, multifamily. It is my belief that a lot of people were holding on and hoping for three rate cuts. They were hoping for four rate cuts. They were hoping and hoping and hoping. Well, hope just left the building. I think the chances of getting three rate cuts are not very good in 2024. I think at this point we may have more folks like Michelle Bowman. Michelle Bowman, remember, was the first Fed president that actually said the quiet part out loud that rates need to go higher. This is something that I have talked about since the dot plot four or five weeks ago. They need the threat of going higher. Commercial pain, once they give up, we are going to start to see listings. We are going to start to see foreclosures. And frankly, when you make financial, bad financial decisions, you rush into a market with short-term debt, bad assumptions, you're supposed to lose. And I think those losses, now that rates will stay higher, will start to come in to fruition in Q3, Q4, and 2025. Jen, I don't know if you saw the opening. I see you there in a text. You did an amazing job getting us minority mindset. Uh, so we all owe Jen a debt of gratitude for that interview yesterday. She did all of the work and made it happen. Thank you, Jen. So again, hot inflation, cross the board. Good news, great news. Rates above seven, housing market slows down, inventory builds, finding motivated sellers get easier, and we will start to see commercial properties transact, foreclose, and allow us to get great deals. So again, I am excited by the hot inflation reading. Alrighty, folks, if you did not get a chance to watch the Minority Mindset interview, it went live yesterday at six o'clock. Again, thank you, Jen. These are some of the things that I took from that conversation. One, Jazz Breed, has built a YouTube channel with 1.8 million subs, and he never, never went negative. You have heard me over the years be frustrated at doom porn growing fast. Jazzbree is a reminder that you don't have to do it. You don't have to. If you stay diligent, if you stay focused, if you continually give value, you can grow to have a great channel. I want to thank Jazz Breit for that reminder. I don't know if you know this, but Jazz Breit bought his first rental home as a teenager, 19. He was sued in his first rental at 20. Remember folks, one of the ORAT rules is bad things happen. And again, something that could happen is you could get sued. We had a lot of conversations about how to get rich today, what to do with $1,000. And what is the number one skill that guarantees success? Folks, if you don't know what Jaspreet's number one skill that guarantees success, you have to watch that video. We cover it in the first 10 minutes. And again, Jaspreet, thank you for the reminder that you don't have to create doom porn and you can grow to have massive influence. I appreciate you. I thank you. Thank you for coming on. Alrighty, folks, let's talk about State Street. I want to know if State Street wants a do-over. State Street yesterday. I mean, I don't know about you, but if I was going to put something out like this and CPI reading was coming the next day, I don't think I put it out. I think I wait a day. What did State Street say? State Street said we are going to get 50 basis point cut in June. I should say by June, because they indicated it may come earlier, and they said that we'll get a 150 basis point cut in 2024. 
State Street, you're wrong. I think the chances, I think the chances of a 50 basis point cut in June are less than us getting a 25 basis point increase. I think the chances of rates going up in June are better than a 50% cut in June. Can you imagine a 50 basis point cut in June? I mean, seriously, seriously. <laughs> how bad, how bad, how bad would stuff have to go between now and June 1st to get a 50 basis point cut? I mean, seriously, how bad would things have to break? It would be I couldn't even, I can't imagine things breaking that fast. So again, State Street, 50 basis point cut by June, 150 basis points in 2024. Yeah, I don't see it. I don't see it. Let's talk about uh, Bostick. Bostick was all over the news, used, news yesterday saying all kinds of things. Uh, Consent, you know, if CPI comes in below consistent, that is a good thing. Well, that didn't happen. If it comes in low, we could cut. That didn't happen. So again, Bostic did not have this information ahead of time. So again, folks, uh, it is really interesting. A lot of people think these Fed presidents get the data early. Based on Yahoo Finance and Bostic's interview, I think it's pretty clear that Bostic did not get the interview, did not get the data ahead of time because he looks like a fool at this point. Let's talk about Dave Ramsey. Dave Ramsey, two years ago, was cornered to make a call on the housing market. And his call was, folks, there's no crash coming. What are you talking about? You bunch of fools and idiots. And he got hate, hate, hate. Well, Dave Ramsey was right. The reason I bring this up is he's come out with a call for housing going forward, which caught my attention. And basically, Dave Ramsey says, sorry, folks, no crash coming. We have an inventory problem. We have a lot. We have demand. We have demographics. We have all of those things uh, going on. So, yes, folks, lots, lots of stuff going on out there in the world. So, again, folks, I want to thank Jen for setting up Minority Mindset. If you haven't set that up yet or you haven't seen it, go ahead and check that out. But most importantly today, we get to congratulate Elise. Elise, congratulations on getting your next deal. Uh, I appreciate it. Thank you. Your card will go out in the mail. Folks, if you don't know what these black cards are, these are cards that I send out to folks that uh, do the work and get their next deal. We have golden tickets for your first deal, and we have these little purple tickets back here in case you need some motivation to write your first disrespectful offer. Have an amazing day, folks. Remember, hot inflation equals good news. Mortgage rates stay above seven, inventory demand falls, inventory builds, and the housing market slowly heals itself. There you go, folks. Take care. Have fun. Later.